when a tiger appeared at an Indian army base. Crying for help, the soldiers were forced to make a big decision. That would lead them to lie directly to the police. With the silhouettes of mountains forming in the background. Akio was patrolling the edge of Pargo army camp in Rajuri. In far north India. The morning sun was creeping up above the horizon. But much of the area was still dark. That's why, when a figure emerged in the distance. Akio couldn't make out what it was. The misty morning fog still obstructed the air, disrupting visibility. He spotted the figure from some distance. And could recognize its movements, slow and deliberate. With four legs powering through the air. From that, he knew it was a big animal, likely a tiger. As it moved closer to the army gates. His suspicions were confirmed. Akil drew his gun up onto his shoulder. Ready to shoot the animal down. Its faded yellow fur was highlighted by black streaks trickling down. From its back to its belly. The inside of its legs was frosty white. As though this part had missed out on the golden tan from the rest of the body. But there was also a mysterious metallic sound. A repetitive clicking, accompanying its movements. This was a huge Bengal tiger with a solid presence. Rather than thin and agile. Its wide face looked weathered and tired, directing its tired body to swing forward step after step. Approaching closer, Akil could now see the true enormity of the beast in front of him, which might have weighed 300 pounds. There was something behind its silky, opaque eyes with a hint of red in them that looked vulnerable. A weary emptiness that came only with desperation. With a quiet moan, the tiger confirmed that it was in trouble. This was not a tiger on the hunt. But Akil's gun remained fixed on his shoulder. Following the tiger in its sight. As the animal crept closer. He couldn't afford to let his guard down even for a moment. His heart beckoned him to lower it. Recognizing signs of desperation. But so too was his heart beating loudly with fear. By now, crying out for help. The tiger was moaning louder and louder. Now fully emerged from the shadows. And with the morning light landing on its body. The true condition of the tiger and. The source of the rattling was revealed. Dragging across the bitumen was a chain hanging down from the tiger's neck. Where it was wrapped. The clunking slowed to a stop. As the tiger halted merely a few feet away from Akil. Showing no indication of fear. Akil's partner, Panda, had also come, awakened by the noise. Go and get the army doctor. Akil yelled. Sending his colleague rushing inside the barracks. Keeping an eye on Akil, the tiger lay down on the hard road in resignation. Akil slowly lowered his gun. Though he kept his hand close to the trigger, just in case. Wild animals could be unpredictable, maybe this was some kind of trap. Fifteen long minutes later, the doctor emerged. Shocked at the sight of a live tiger. He rubbed his eyes to make sure he wasn't still dreaming. But sensing the urgency, he got to work right away. Luring the tiger closer with some food so he could inspect it. The doctor didn't seem afraid. He had worked as a volunteer veterinarian when he was younger. And had seen all kinds of animals. One thing was for sure, this tiger was in deep trouble. He fettered some uncooked meat scraps. Which provided some time to observe the animal more closely. Tilting his head and squinting. The doctor read an engraving on the side of a lock at the bottom of the chain. It was the name of a circus. With the logo of a tent in the center of two larger circles. This tiger had been a circus animal, it explained. Why it looked so battered and tired. Less than a week ago. This tiger had been traveling the country as part of a small circus troupe. The use of tigers and other animals had been banned for decades. But this operation wasn't big enough to attract authorities. For those who knew about the circus. Though, this tiger was the main attraction. Named Keela, the female tiger had been trained to perform on stage. 
jumping through hoops, moving on command, and dazzling audiences, disciplined and responsive. It was clear that this had taken years of harsh training to achieve. Obedience to all commands. With the two other male tigers of the circus aging, Kilo was the only one able to perform. After years of intimidation, the ringmaster was confident that Kila would never step out of line. But something had changed in the last few months. Unbeknownst to any of her handlers, Kila had mated with one of the male tigers, Raja, and was now pregnant with their cubs. This changed everything. Usually, tigers retreated to privacy after becoming pregnant. Preferring isolation. At the circus, that wasn't possible. But Kila wasn't going to let that stop her. On the day that the police descended on the circus, Kila saw her opportunity. The main purpose of the police visit was to be paid off in bribe money. They were not really interested in shutting the operation down. But this would be their undoing. When Kila noticed her enclosure's gate was left slightly ajar, she sneaked towards it. Going against all the fears the ringmaster had instilled in her. The crackling sound of the dreaded whip echoed in the back of her mind. She was determined. Though, and with a mighty tug. She twisted and jumped her body up. Until the rusty chain weighing her down broke loose. Her eyes towards the exit. Keela had almost made it through the gate. When a group of police officers intervened. Standing in a way to block the exit. They were yelling out at her, trying to frighten her back into the enclosure. It seemed that she was destined to live out her days trapped in a circus. But with a giant roar that shook the air. Keela swiped at one of the men, sending him ragdolling to one side. And allowing for a passage for her to disappear off into the jungle. Her chain bounced along the ground behind her. She didn't look back. Refusing to pay any attention to the screams in the distance. A gunshot rang out through the air, but Keela continued on. Having finally escaped the circus. She was left with the new challenge of surviving in the wild. It wasn't only her, at any given moment. She was expecting a litter of cubs. If she went into labor, she would be forced to stop. That would mean the authorities catching up. And sending her back to the circus. Now and then, she could hear the faint chatter of men in the distance. Keela didn't have time to stop and forage for food. She kept moving, picking up scraps. Where she could but otherwise starving. On the inside, she hadn't been fed well in the circus as it was. And was moving through the jungle fast. She could feel her energy slipping away. After a day, though, Keela stopped and immense pain came over her coming up from her uterus through to her stomach and chest. Spotting a cave up ahead. She had no choice but to seek shelter. It was dark and quiet enough, and just a few hours later. Kilo was joined by four tiny cubs. She was exhausted, totally drained from the past few days. She lay almost motionless, her cubs bounced around her, licking her face. But now she was met with a task greater than her own survival. To gather enough food to keep producing enough milk for these young ones. Pulling together the last gasp of strength she had. Keela left her cubs in the cave after they had drifted off to sleep. She found her way to the side of the jungle. Confused but drawn to the street lights. Spotting a figure on the underside. She had no choice but to approach. But she was extremely weak. This was the moment when Akil saw her while he was on duty. And after the doctor had been summoned. Kilo was fed, and the soldiers were able to remove her chain collar. The tiger, for the first time in years. Well fed, became incredibly affectionate toward the soldiers. That gratitude only lasted a few minutes. Though, after which point Kila suddenly stood up and ran back into the forest. The three army men were left standing there. Looking out to the dimmed forest. Astonished by the entire ordeal. Even more shocking was the following day. Around the same time in the morning. When the tiger returned. 
The two soldiers, Akil and Chanda, were still recounting the events from the day earlier. This time, it was Chanda who spotted the tiger first. There was no need to draw guns, panic, or call the doctor. Kila was moving with much more energy now. Emerging from exactly the same spot in the wall of trees. She seemed to have a bounce in her step, and that wasn't all. Hanging out of her mouth was a small, furry shape. It was one of her cubs, sleepy-eyed and restless. Kila brought the cub right up to the two soldiers. Dropping it on the ground right at their feet. She seemed to be proud to show off her small creation to the two men. Who had saved her? They were allowed to pet and hold the cub. Who reciprocated the affection? This was already a once-in-a-lifetime experience for the soldiers. Who were left totally shocked. When they later learned of Kila's history. It made her trust even more staggering. After being trapped, prodded, and mistreated her entire life. She still approached these men trustingly. In the meantime, they fed the tiger for the second day in a row. Establishing something that would become a ritual for the next week. Akil and Chanda requested to stay on the night shift. It quickly became the highlight of their day. But one day, Kila didn't appear. And the men began to worry. A few days later, they received a visit that put the pieces of the puzzle together. A nearby police officer arrived at the army base. Accompanied by a manager from the circus. To ask whether anyone had seen a tiger roaming nearby. They claimed to be intending to capture it and return it to a sanctuary. But Akil and Chanda were suspicious. It was common knowledge that owning or using tigers. As entertainment was illegal. Especially for circuses. Additionally, the local police were highly corrupt. Why hadn't the army base been contacted by someone from the sanctuary? And besides, the nearest wildlife park was hours away. As young boys, these two soldiers had grown up fascinated by the raw power of Bengal tigers. They were a sign of national pride, holding a special place in Indian culture and religion. That's why something felt off about these two visitors. Akil spotted a lanyard hanging out of one of the man's pockets, which read Raj Camel Circus. When he noticed this, the man stuffed the lanyard back into his pants, looking flustered. But that's when the policeman's tone became more serious and commanding. Demanding that the soldiers divulge any information they might have. Instinctively, both Akil and Chanda told the officer. They hadn't seen anything of the sort. They were putting their jobs at risk. Lying to the police was a serious offense. The policeman could sense that he wasn't getting the truth. But after interrogating the doctor on site too. He was met with a united front. Nobody was willing to talk. They all hoped that Kila was able to get enough distance to be safe forever. Fortunately, constricted by her cubs. The tiger was still seeking refuge in the cave less than a quarter mile away. And it wouldn't take long for the circus manager to find it. Resuming their search into the forest. They were determined to find the tiger with or. Without assistance from the army base. What they didn't suspect was that they were not alone in their search. Shortly after their visit. The army doctor made a phone call to an animal rescue group with. Whom he had once volunteered. With absolute secrecy. He told them the situation and that it was a sensitive and urgent matter. The team responded almost immediately. Sending a group of volunteers traveling. By jeep to track down the tiger and her cubs. The car hurtled down the small roads. Leaving clouds of dust behind it in the hopes. That they could reach the tiger first. The hunt was now on, and the clock was ticking. It was a race between the circus manager and the rescue team. Having a huge head start. The circus manager, along with the policemen, were looking for any sign of tiger tracks. They scoured the environment for footprints, broken foliage, or remnants of food. But the animal rescue team had a vital piece of information.
they knew that the tiger had given birth, which narrowed the search to secluded and safe areas. The team arrived from the opposite side of the forest. Careful not to arouse any suspicion. Knowing that if caught by the police, they would end up behind bars as well as the tiger. Both groups were fast closing in on the cave. As the policeman moved past a clearing, the circus manager motioned for him to stop. Silently, he pointed out some large footprints leading down a small hill. At the end of which was a rocky cave, partly hidden behind the bushes. Matching the size of the tiger's paws. The manager was sure this was the location of his lost tiger. Approaching the cave with soft footsteps and his tranquilizer ready. The circus manager was already counting the money in his head. Returning his star attraction would guarantee the future of his operation. Without it, there wouldn't be enough interest to keep things going. Just as he reached the foot of the cave. The two men shined their flashlights inside and readied their guns. Pointing directly inside. But to their surprise, there was nothing there. Only some half-scraped animal bones. Berry stains, and nutshells. A warmth was still present in the cave, only moments ago. Something had been there and had left in a hurry. Meanwhile, the rescue team was dashing out of the search area. Just minutes ago, they had lured the tiger out with food and sedated it. Loading it into a wheelbarrow and pushing it to their truck parked nearby on the road. Its cubs too were being whisked away. Wrapped in a blanket and cradled in one of the members' arms. Luckily, they had reached the tiger and her cubs in the nick of time. Guided by the doctor's directions, they had been able to locate the cave much quicker. As quickly as possible, they hoisted the tiger into the back of the truck. As the front lights flickered and the clunky engine jolted into action, the circus manager's head perked up a quarter mile away. But it was too late for him to do anything. The truck disappeared into the dark, and the tigers with it. Just a few hours later. The sleepy mother was waking up in the observation. Enclosure of a wildlife sanctuary. Initially confused. She was reassured when she was joined by her cubs. But the danger wasn't quite over news of a new arrival rippled through the region. And the circus manager came knocking. In an effort to take Keela back. But when he failed to produce any legitimate documentation. The sanctuary refused. The man became enraged. Threatening to come back and break into the sanctuary himself. While he argued and demanded that the tiger be released. A staff member forwarded his details to a national task force. Daringly, that staff member later followed the circus manager's car. Knowing that it was crucial to track down the location of the illegal operation. Evading the man's detection by a whisker. A brave staff member was able to get close enough to spot a collection of lights. Which he pinned on his phone's GPS. With that information handed to the authorities. It only took a brief investigation, a raid of the circus property and speaking with a few eyewitnesses for a swift decision to be reached. The circus was shut down permanently. And the organizers were slapped with a whopping 8 million rupee fine. With all of the money going towards tiger conservation. And the two male tigers were sent to the same sanctuary. That included the father of the cubs. Raja, who was reunited with his family. Most importantly though, the tigers were now in safe hands. She and her cubs had all been fed, treated, and brought back to health by on-site veterinarians. The mother was given a new name. Makali, after another famous female tiger, who played a significant role in the growth of the Indian tiger population. Her safety was now guaranteed. And once healthy again, the sanctuary invited Akil, Chanda, and the doctor back for an exclusive visit while her admirers observed from a distance, marveling at her majesty, taking some time away from her cubs. She approached them, sensing familiarity. She could smell that these were the same men, who had treated her weeks earlier. And for a second time, 
She proudly brought her cubs to see the men who had saved them. Heroes are great. But not everyone can be a hero. They have to risk their lives to serve and protect others. While one cannot predict how they will behave in critical situations, will they give up everything to help those in need or choose to stand by quietly for their own benefit and safety? The story we are going to tell today is incredible. Because this man got help when he himself was in trouble. And that help was related to the good things he had done before. Which could be karma. Let's get to the story. Alex got a job as a hunter. And his task was to protect the tigers from the bandits. He was such a principled and brave man that. He soon dispersed all those who were engaged in poaching. And even the notorious villains were afraid of him. Soon his area was restored to order and everything was so peaceful and calm. The locals were so satisfied with Alex's peacekeeping work that they always turned to him for help. It was the early 2000s, and the logging industry was particularly booming. And they were cutting and exporting large amounts of timber without any permits. For these speculators, it was the equivalent of no government. Because they were backed by the big guys. They were willing to buy and pay for all the timber. And they were willing to suffer the consequences. Alex alone could not deal with so many of them. Because they were well armed and numerous. The only thing this man could do was to collect evidence. That they had cut down the forest without permission. And send all the evidence to the capital. There, this plundering should be able to be resolved. Spring had arrived, the river was rushing. And the gradually melting ice stream was slowly moving downstream. Suddenly he heard a gunshot in the distance. So without hesitation he grabbed his gun and rushed in that direction. From the number of shots. They didn't sound like hunters who would always waste a lot of ammunition. When he reached the river, he saw a terrible thing. A bear with two cubs was running along one of the ice streams. And the lumberjacks on the other side were shouting and laughing. They shot at the poor animals with their weapons thus forcing them to run straight into the icy current. A few moments later, the bear fell into the water with its cubs. It had enough strength to swim against the current and it finally made it to shore. But the cub was still struggling and crying. And it could not make it to shore. The cruel people on the other side of the river were still laughing. At the poor animals and placing bets on. Who would and would not make it to shore. The mother bear roared mournfully from the shore. As it called for its cubs to come to it. Seeing this scene, Alex immediately took off his heavy coat and boots. And without hesitation, he rushed into the cold water. He swam hard to where the first bear was. But he didn't have time to get it to shore first. So he tried to catch the second cub. Luck was on Alex's side that day, and God was looking out for them. He held both cubs in one arm and managed to pull them ashore. And he didn't even have time to be afraid. The huge female bear immediately ran up to him, but it didn't touch him. It understood that this brave man had just saved its beloved cubs. So it disappeared into the forest with its cubs. The man who was frozen returned home, shivering and quickly went to get warm. He struggled for a long time to fight the disease because he had a bad cold that day and could not leave his house for some time. When he finally recovered and returned to patrol, he was horrified to see the loggers mercilessly cutting down trees. All they left was the stumps and he took his camera to capture the atrocity so he could send it to government authorities. But unfortunately, he was noticed by the men and surrounded by them. And one of them pulled out a knife and started attacking him. The situation was very bad. Suddenly a huge bear jumped out of the bushes. And used its huge paw to throw the bad guys one by one. Alex recognized the three bears as the ones. He had rescued from the water not long ago. And they heard his cries and reached out to him. That day, this mother bear repaid him for saving its cubs lives. 
So friends, when nature sees that a person cannot cope with their misfortune, it comes to the aid of those who risk their lives to save innocent souls. It has always taken care of nature and its inhabitants. Because we share this planet. Some people cannot imagine life without their pets. And the pets they most often adopt are cats and dogs. For many centuries. These cute little pets have delighted people just by staying at home. But the pet adopted by the hero of our story today is not a cat or a dog but a giant grizzly bear. Casey Anderson has dreamed of becoming an animal rescuer since he was a child. And now that he's a grown man, his dream has come true. Together with other rescuers, he regularly travels the neighborhood looking for animals that need help. On one occasion, they found several naked bear cubs, whose mother had been brutally killed by poachers. Without hesitation, Kathy took the cubs to her home. But unfortunately only one survived. Casey loved the little creature so much that he decided to keep it. He named it Brutus and built a special enclosure in his yard to protect it. At first, this little bear always stayed in its enclosure. But as it grew up, it began to grow bolder. It soon climbed into its owner's house and they ended up eating at the same table and sleeping in the same bed. Brutus even swam in its owner's pool. It really enjoyed its life in the human world. And it loved living with its owner. Brutus became a local celebrity and it was even the best man at Kathy's wedding. Can you believe it? During this time, Brutus has never shown any aggression toward people, either toward its owner, Casey, or any of its family members. On the contrary, it would protect its family from strangers. Casey himself loves to talk about his pet bear. And he can't stop talking about it. But does he advocate having a wild animal in the house? The answer is no. After all, he says, he's lucky that it was Brutus he met. He says, I think the bear is great to be around. But I can't guarantee the same for other wild animals. Of course. There are situations in their lives where the bear is mischievous and it makes a mess of their house. When that happened, Casey would gently scold his pet. And then Brutus would hang its head guiltily as if seeking forgiveness. Such a sight touched Casey's heart. So he was never able to be angry with Brutus for very long. And in a short time he would forgive it. Many people have warned Casey that such cohabitation is dangerous for them, and that they will one day experience something bad because wild animals must live in their natural habitat. Casey was sure that Brutus would not survive in the wild at all, because it had lived in the human world since it was two weeks old. It had lost its mother too early, and its mother had failed to teach it how to get its own food, or avoid danger from nature. During the years it lived in Casey's home, it learned how to communicate with its animal friends, and was able to understand when it wanted to play, and when it needed to be left alone. According to Casey, he has taken all the safety measures in the house in order to adapt to this cohabitation, and he is trying to prevent accidents. Through his example, Casey shows that even wild animals can be tamed. If you show them genuine concern and kindness, people only see grizzlies as potentially dangerous. He says, thinking they are fierce and difficult to live with. In fact, they can be very cute. Animals can sense the kindness and friendliness of people. Do you think such cohabitation is dangerous for Kathy? Or are there exceptions in nature? If handled properly, even the fiercest of animals can become as docile as a kitten.